Escaping Differently by Kenyon Crawford. I was so excited to go to kindergarten. I had heard about school from my older brother, and more than anything, I wanted to get homework. He made it look so cool. I didn't know then that school would be the worst thing that ever happened to me. At first, kindergarten was fun. I loved playing with the other kids, especially my friend Nathan. We just ran around a lot, and the work wasn't too hard. The only hard part was getting pulled out for speech therapy. I had trouble saying the S and C sounds, so every day I would go to a special class with a speech pathologist. It was really frustrating because she would tell me how to say a sound, and I would say it exactly as she said it. I thought, but it would still be wrong. In first grade, I started to feel like I was behind. My teacher wasn't as supportive, and I would get in trouble when I counted on my fingers during math. I started counting under my desk so she wouldn't see. I also couldn't read. The other kids would be racing through books, and I was having trouble with my letters even though I was trying really hard. I also started getting homework, and I learned very quickly that homework was definitely not cool. It would take me two hours to do ten problems. When I went to class the next day, the other kids would say, that homework was so easy. I pretended it was easy too. The fact that I didn't understand my work became a secret that I kept hidden at all costs. Being a little guy, I also didn't understand why I was being pulled out for speech therapy. Why was I being singled out? I always felt like I missed the fun stuff that the rest of the class was doing. Sometimes I even missed recess. When the other kids asked where I went, I would make up an excuse, telling them I went to the nurse or the bathroom. One of the worst things about elementary school was the IEP meetings. I went to only one. They talked about my reading level and what I could and couldn't do. He's on second grade reading level and he's in fifth grade. I felt invisible. They were talking to each other as if I wasn't sitting right there. Then they finally asked me what I thought. I felt mad, nervous, and judged. I didn't say a word. I just wanted to leave. I found the meeting very unhelpful, and after that, when asked if I wanted to attend the meeting, I said no. Even though I had an IEP, the teachers didn't even act like I had one. It took forever to get one in the first place, but when I did, the teachers didn't even follow it. For example, I was supposed to only have 10 problems for homework, and they would give me all 20. Since I knew it would take forever to do, I would hide my homework from my parents so I wouldn't have to sit there for hours trying to do it. Then the next day, I would get the answers from my friends. I got caught in a never-ending cycle of cheating. Not only on homework, but on tests, too. This cheating cycle was impossible to get out of. I would study for hours for the test, forget everything when I was in class, and get a bad grade. The only way I could survive was to cheat, so I could get done with the test at the same time as everyone else. Cheating helped me not feel ashamed for sitting there forever not knowing the answer. If I copied someone else's work, I could turn it in and get an A. It was kind of a no-brainer, but the cost was great. Inside, I hated lying to my parents, who would praise me for my A's. I also secretly started to feel like I couldn't do anything myself. When there was no one to cheat off, I would sit there and look at the blank page, filling in the one or two problems that I could do. Since I wanted to be like everyone else, I would just turn it in when everyone else did. If I didn't, the teacher would ask me in front of everyone if I was done yet. I had two choices. I could say yes and turn it in unfinished, or I could finish in the hall where she would send me and miss whatever she was talking about next. I was trapped. In a sense, each passing grade was like the key to an escape room. In an escape room, you are locked in a room. In order to get out, there are tasks, puzzles, and mysterious keys. You don't know where to start. And at first, it feels impossible. And that's how school felt to me. I had to find ways to escape from the shame, confusion, and feelings of being left behind that I was experiencing at school. When the teacher asked a question, 
I would never raise my hand, but she would call on me anyway. I hated this more than anything. I would sit there for two minutes, and finally just make up some stupid funny answer. This would annoy the teacher, but make the kids laugh. I found another way out of the escape room. Due to dyslexia, I also got tested. A lot. I was pulled out, again, to do these random puzzles and read words that didn't even make sense. These tests created all sorts of feelings. Frustration, anger, and exhaustion. I just wanted to be like everyone else. I also felt kind of alone at school. Whenever we had group projects, no one wanted me in their group because I couldn't keep up. Outside of school, though, things were different. I had been playing baseball since I was four, and I was really good at it. Out on the field, I was picked first. It felt great. I lived for recess and summer vacations. Those were the windows in my escape room. During the summer, I played baseball. The baseball field opened its arms to me, unlike school ever had. When I was out on the field, I actually wanted to learn. In sports, instead of being behind everyone, I was one of the best. My teammates wanted me to be around. They respected how hard I worked, and my work paid off. I taught myself how to pitch with both my right hand and left hand. Because school was so hard, I was motivated to be great at sports. Also, sports came so naturally. They were easy. Around this time, I was scrolling through TikTok on my phone when I ran across a guy named Jordan Toma, a motivational speaker who has dyslexia. I watched his videos a lot and was so motivated by this guy. For the first time, I felt inspired. It felt like someone outside of my family believed in me. A couple of days later, my mom emailed him and told him my story and what I'd been going through. He reached out with a video just for me. Everything in the video related to exactly what I was going through, and his words gave me the courage to keep on going. A couple of things he said in the message to me were, it's not going to get easier, but you're going to get stronger, and after you're done climbing the mountain, you will be able to look back to see how far you've come and how much farther you can go. Jordan Toma was the first truly helpful key in the escape room I'd been living in for a while, and after that key was found, something clicked. I started to believe in myself, and when that happened, school felt a little easier, even though the academic part was not any different. After I heard Jordan's speech, I was motivated to work harder and strive harder than everyone else and I wasn't going to let anyone stop me from doing that. Whenever things became hard in school, I would look back on the video he sent me because he knew how to overcome this and he knew how to keep on moving forward. I knew that in order to succeed, I was going to have to put a lot of work into school, even though it was overwhelming, stressful, and annoying. In order to catch up in school, I wanted to have a new start and get somewhat out of the escape room cycle that I had found myself in in public school. I started Google searching for one-on-one -on -one private schools near me that could help. Jordan's words had given me the courage I needed to keep going, so I researched on my own to figure out my next step. Once I found a school where I thought I could actually learn, I told my parents about it. I was looking for new rocks to climb the mountain. As Jordan had said, I was planning my own escape route. One day when I was searching on the internet, I found a private school where every class was one-on-one. -on -one. I told my parents about it, and they looked into it. They thought it would be a good fit, too, so we toured the school. It felt like I was meant to go there. I could go at my own pace. I would never have to cheat again. I could actually learn. I finished the school year in public school and then transferred to the private school the next year. It was the best decision ever. I had found another key to help me get out of the life-cycling, never-ending escape room of dyslexia, and there was finally some light starting to shine through. I learned more in a few months of one-on-one -on -one teaching than I had learned in an entire year in public school. Since every class was taught in my type of learning environment, school was actually fun for me. 
I never thought I would be able to say that. I finally began to believe in myself. I started getting great grades without having to feel ashamed or not good enough. Or by cheating. I used to always feel disappointed. I was ashamed of myself for not being like everyone else. But all I had to understand was that I just learned differently. I also learned that because of my dyslexia, I also have many advantages such as big picture thinking and athleticism. When I go back to public school, I don't know what it will bring, but I'm going to be ready for anything. If you are going through the escape room like me, know that you are not the only kid in the room. Yes, it will be extremely hard at first, but you'll get used to it. You will find your own keys, and you will find more people just like you to help you get a little better as the levels go on. I used to think that I was the only kid in the escape room, and it really brought me down. I wish I could tell my younger self that even though school was hard, I had so many advantages in other areas. I just needed to figure out what I wanted to learn and how I could learn it in a way that fit my learning style. I am glad I understand this now. I know I will work harder than anyone in public high school next year. I will climb those rocks until I get to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm.